When you use these no-code apps to build Lovable, Reclit, Bolt, you're not guaranteed success. And even though they're getting better all the time, you still need to understand how you can actually work with the code after to complete a project. And so case in point, this app here, Sunshine Dog Wash, looks like a great little landing page, and it is. It's a great thorough website. Uh, this was built on Replit and it's having a really hard time connecting to the Stripe API and just showing a simple payment form. This is the one of the simpler things to do when you're vibe coding. So here, basically, I just click join now, start a membership, and it's just not working. It's actually just signing me out there. And not only is it not working, I've spent days trying to fix this, days vibe coding. And you know, that's a long time when you're vibe coding because normally things go fairly fast if they're going right. And this is something that is not too complicated. You can see here, it's all just a mess inside the console because of all the different debugging for both we put in there. And you see, we got 400 errors, we got timeouts, and all we're trying to do is show a payment screen. So I'm going to rebuild this app in this video. I'm going to rebuild it from the top, brand new. We're going to make a PRD. And then I'm going to use the Crawford AI MCP with Plot Desktop to scrape the original homepage so I have all the content to give to my AI co-pilot. And then we're going to just get the Stripe integration working right out of the gate. I think a real important part of vibe coding, like a, a, a real key principle is save time and save money. And when you are spending a lot of time and the premium Sonnet 4 requests are adding up, maybe you should just start over. And sometimes, you know, you're, you're in so deep, you don't want to start over and it sucks. And this is what it means to not be a developer. But every time you do start over, every time you do fail, which happens to me all the time, you learn. And then you learn not to follow that same pattern you did the last time, which led you to the failure. <laughs> so we're starting over here. And this time, unlike how this app was started, we're going to write a PRD, a product requirements document. And this is going to help us create the whole infrastructure, the whole database schema, everything right off the bat so we run into less potential issues later with super simple things like an edge function to integrate Stripe. So we're going to start off with Claude. Help me write a PRD for an XJS app that is a website for some gen dog wash. Okay, so I accidentally pressed enter before I was done here, but the prompt is pretty simple. Help me write a PRD for an XJS app. It's a website for Sunshine Dog Wash with dog washing services. There's a landing page with the CTA for several membership options and user can select membership plan on sign up. And here we've got our document that it made for us. Create a modern user friendly business objectives. Not super necessary for us right now. Target audience, fine. Okay, so the core features of the product. We need a landing page, yes. Fact section, okay, great. The membership plans, yes. User registration and onboarding, yes. Technical requirements, account dashboard, good. Technical requirements, framework and technology stack, tailwind. Now, there's two things here we're gonna uh, specify is we're gonna use Superbase and we are going to deploy on Netlify. So I'm gonna mention that. Membership management, plan selection, secure payment processing, subscription management, good. User dashboard, admin panel. So this looks pretty good. Then I'm just gonna give it some notes. Here are some notes. We'll be using Cubebase for the back end and deploying on Netlify. We'll be building with an AI co-pilot. Timelines are not necessary. And we'll pop that in. And as that finishes, the last thing I'm gonna do I'm going to open up Claude desktop and I'm going to show you in my settings here that I have a bunch of MCPs hooked up and this is crawl for AI. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I use crawl for AI for scraping resources for directory projects. What crawl for AI MCP allows when it's attached to Claude desktop or cursor is I can just say 
scrape this home page for all content and export it as a markdown file using crawl for AIMCP. And then I put in the address of the site. So now it's scraping the original home page of the app. There it all is. And now it's formatting it in markdown for me. And this is going to be attached to our PRD for prompting in the no code builder app. Come back to here. We have our PRD. I'm just going to copy all that. Build this app based on the PRD and I'm going to copy the whole PRD there. And then I upload the markdown file of the scraped homepage. And I'm also going to upload screenshots. So the first thing here is we can just get a few nice images of this pretty solid landing page, which was originally made on Repit. All right. And that's probably more, I think you can only upload five files. So we put our PRD in there, build this app based on the PRD, match the style to the attached screenshots. Homepage copy is also attached. And obviously we already looked through the PRD, but here it's just very detailed. So Superbase, Stripe, Next.js, blah, blah, blah. This is aware of all our requirements here, at least to the best of our knowledge. And this will help ensure a higher likelihood of success by starting your no code app project like this. So one thing it should obviously be important to say here is like I mentioned earlier, I'm always like, yeah, use cursor, use Visual Studio Code, learn to work with the code after the no code app so you can tweak it so you can keep expanding it because those no code apps have context window limits, you're eventually going to get stuck, you're going to end up in a feedback loop death spiral, and it really sucks once you're there. So you want to learn that technique. In this video, though, I'm going to use Bolt, another no code app to rebuild this because I have credits there already. And the reason I bring this up is it's become really important to me as I'm racking up $250 cursor AI bills because I'm building a lot, I'm building all the time. And when you're building all that much, you know, there's an old saying, small holes sink ships, right? And so little $10 here, $20 here, blah, 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 that all adds up. And like I said, I'm paying $250 a month to do amazing things. It would be much more expensive to hire a developer. But that said, I've accidentally stayed subscribed to Bolt. So I'm gonna use those credits as a way to save money here. Otherwise, this would cost at least five more dollars using premium Sonnet 4 requests with Cursor. So let's keep going. Okay, so that was fast. We've got our sunshine dog wash. We need to move that over to the left. We got to add our original images, but otherwise it's more or less looking the same. It's looking good. And the funny part is I just click choose plan and it brings me right away to what I need instead of having to, I don't know, man, however Replit made that app, it was just weird. It was slow. And I mean, who's to blame, right? This is just how it goes, right? That when you're using software to build things for you, cause you don't know how to do it. I mean, all we can do is learn. All we can do is get better. So this is, uh, this is going well. And now I'm going to fix the designs here. So we need the logo, for example. And I do have that stuff in uh, the original repo. So I'm just going to go into the code here and I'm going to find the public folder. I don't see a public folder, so I'm going to make it called public. And in there, I'll just drag the logo. And I'll drag this tagline. All right, Sunshine Dogwash is there. Uh, this one didn't work. It's using the wrong image. We'll look at that. Let's see here. Company tagline.png, huh? Company tagline. Oh, that's because that needs to be capitalized. So I'm just going to rename that file. All right. So there's our image here. That's fun. And then that's, uh, how it works. I kind of like this the way it did better. What's crazy. Oh yeah. And so I knew where to find these images because we scraped it and it got the, the unsplash website. It's also interesting that Replit didn't save the unsplash pictures. It just is displaying them from unsplash. There's our quality pet care. We want to lower the opacity 
So lower the background opacity of the text box and the hero. Great. So now that button's fixed. There's always little tweaks that can be done, but for now, let's move into deployment. I'm going to add it to GitHub. I'm going to call it Sunshine Dog Wash version two, baby. Great. And now I simply go to Netlify and we go over here to the projects. We add new project. We import an existing project from GitHub. Sunshine Dogwash version two. Main branch. Everything is so compared to like Astro, Netlify deploys Next.js projects very smoothly. Uh, but in other builds, I mean, Jekyll, it, de it deploys well as well, but, um, if you're using Astro, it's a little trickier. So we're going to deploy there, but first you want to import your .env keys. You can just paste the whole .env file here. So according to Bolt earlier, there was actually a deploy, a build error. There was a build error. So let's see what happens from Netlify here. Build failed. So simply. We now go into the deploys, click that failed. And here we get a little AI description and it tells you why. We're gonna copy the analysis for use in AI tools. I'm gonna to go back to Bolt. I'm gonna paste that in there and let Bolt fix it. All right, we did it. It's working. I've had to refresh it here, but it is working. It's deployed live now on suchhydogwash.com. And you can become a member right away. You choose your plan, you sign up, and it takes you right to the payment screen. Oh, I already had an account. Oh, there's the payment screen. So it takes me there, which happened to be very, very, very difficult to do with the app Replit made. So to close this off, I just would want to say that you could take your app from Replit to Cursor and do that whole thing like I do in many of the videos, but I tried to do that and I spent Days and days and days trying to fix it, just getting a Stripe payment screen up. And I was trying to make it a bit more involved, like embedded and stuff, but it didn't even give me an option to actually just forward it to the Stripe checkout page and then use whatever webhook to send it back to the app. So there would be the data to update the SIPA based database. There was nothing. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always email me, join the AI captains bootcamp below or the vibe builders newsletter. I have links on all these videos all down below. Sign up for the emails. There's lots of value coming your way. You'll learn a lot of the stuff. I try the things I learned in my YouTube videos. I try to just put them into writing form and then just put those as sequences. So you can just receive tips like that all the time. And hopefully it's really helpful. But if you have questions, feel free to just respond to any of those emails and we can talk. There's a lot to learn in this realm, especially if you're a non-coder, but this is how we survive into the age of AI. So we got to keep going strong. I'll see you in the next video.